Hello everyone! Welcome back to Tiny Bunny, a text-based horror game. Yes. I recently played part one of this game where I covered chapter one and we had some spooks and some scares. It was pretty creepy. So please go back and watch that if you haven't already and then come back and see this one if you enjoy it. This game is really cool. It's so interesting. It's it's a lot of reading, so be prepared for that. I will be talking a lot, but I just think this game is incredibly charming and you can see that a lot of love went into it, which I really like. So let's get started. Let's see what the story is this time. I think this time we're in the school. I think we're in Anton's school. Or his first day of school. That's right. Yes, I remember now. Just gotta remember to use the old fucking noggin. Activate those that grey matter. New school, new teachers, and most importantly, new classmates, who I always have trouble connecting with. Yeah, because that was the story so far, right? Anton and his family moved out into the wilderness. They moved out into this little cabin. It's all haunted and shit. There's a forest that's really aggressive. Then there's a kid who went missing called Vova, and we found his mitten. Like most other kids with glasses, probably. I forced myself to get out of my warm bed, Dad would usually drive me to my old school, but this morning the bedroom of my parents was silent. Did they sleep in? Maybe it was a good thing. I didn't want to get the daddy's boy reputation from day one. My parents were probably still tucked in, dreaming about the good old days, when everything was so simple and easy. Sweet dreams, even if far removed from reality. I silently sneaked out to the first floor so I wouldn't wake up anybody, especially the peaceful, peacefully sleeping Olya my darling little sister. Oh lord. I did my best not to step on the middle of every floorboard. Oh, I did my best to step on the middle of every floorboard. Yeah, by the way, I can't read. I get I get confused <laughs> with words, so I try my best. Please, please don't make fun of me. And if you do, make sure it's actually funny, because then I'll appreciate it. I used to play like this even in our old apartment. If my soles touched the space between the floorboards, it counted as stepping into lava. The clock was spurring me on with its hands. I need to hurry! Faster! Faster! I was too fast, so I needed to circle the hallway once again. Boiling lava was bursting out of the cracks between floorboards. I needed to watch my step, to survive at any cost. Hippity hop, like a frog jumping on molehills, like a fearful bunny in a grove full of wolves. I made a sandwich in the kitchen shoved it down my throat and drank it with cold tea. Gross! Disgusting little snakes writhed in my belly, the fear of getting hit and being called nasty names. The clock ticked. I need to go. It was dark outside, fitting for an early winter morning. The darkness never fully left the houses around here. I took my time tying my shoes, buttoning up the puffy down jacket, trying to delay my unpleasant exit into the semi-dark, into the unknown, unnerving unknown. Oof. I rubbed my glasses for good luck, though I couldn't remember a single time these thick pieces of glass brought me any good fortune. Oh, oh no! Oh, why are we outside? Oh, fucking yes! The last time I was out here, I got chased by a big owl and a pack of dogs. He must have really been bullied for his glasses because... The, it's the one thing that keeps coming up is he's afraid of people making fun of his glasses, which is really sad. So to any glasswearers out there watching this, you fucking great. Don't listen to what people say. Nothing wrong with glasses. They help you to see better and you can see through all the bullshit. Back to narrator mode. The sky was akin to a giant bruise. On the east side of it, a black cloud was swelling up. It's a fucking bird. It licked up stars from the sky and ex extinguished the rising sun. Darkness was plastered all over the treetops. The cautious cries of birds got tangled up in the thicket. I locked the front door with a long key that I wore around my neck, like Aaron Yeager. My parents made me wear this noose, afraid that I, being the total klutz that I am, could lose the key otherwise. The wind was whizzing outside of the gate. It invited me into my new life toward dubious adventures and tagged alone like an old buddy, pushing me in the back. So, where are the parents? Where are my parents? They they chill with you just walking to school in the dark? A school you've never been to before? Do you even know how to get there? Oh, I'm turning into a mother! Don't die! Be good. Treat your teachers nicely. Don't be a fucking asshole. Upon reaching the edge of the forest, 
I hid my nose in the coat's collar. As soon as I showed the forest, I felt my heart fall into my stomach. Oh, I hate this fucking forest. And the music swelling up. Great. I was squeezing through the thin fire break. My hair ruffled up and my back hunched over. Tall trees stood on both sides of a tiny trail. The snowy blanket rustled under my feet, and the canopy of intertwined branches above me, above my head, cut me off from the re already sparse starlight. Fuck me. Stop it. I just want to learn how to read. The night had no plans of moving away from the forest. In this darkness, trees reminded me of old shaggy women that smelled of burial earth. Their trunks turned into cracked, wrinkled faces with holes in the middle as their mouths. If I lost focus for even a moment, mold-covered witches could drag me into the forest's depths. Depths, depths. Then my parents would be walking around these parts, screaming my name. But the dead can't answer the living. Hi, Babushka! Hello! Ah, hi. A sense of panic was growing in my chest. Fucking same! I was fine with Dad carrying me into the school in his hands by now if it saved me from watching the darkness rise up in the ravines like black dough. It felt like someone jumped into the bushes behind me, so I turned around. Why would you do that? You probably should just fucking run. As soon as I started walking faster, I heard the snow squeak behind me. The forest took a deep breath with its giant lungs. The windfall cracked. The wind and the birds were left behind in the field. Now I could only hear the forest's creak. I walked, listening closely, and the unseen presence grew stronger. Oh, hello. Why would you do that? Fuck. I turned my head so fast it made my neck crunch. <laughs> I don't like this angle. A tiny trail behind me disappeared into the darkness. The tree branches overlapped, forming a natural tunnel. God. What he said. Who's there? The question escaped my lips and dissolved into the unending creaking sound of the wooden idols. The pines around me. Why did I think going through the forest alone was a good idea? I don't know. That is what I've been asking. I'm either going mad, or someone had intentionally lured me here, away from my home. Distant lights granted me a smidgen of hope. This is when something pops up, isn't it? A country road! Country road, take me home to the place. Have a long West Virginia, mama, ma take me home. Okay, sorry. I ran there as fast as I could, as if afraid that the trail would shrink. Clawed hands will grip me by the shoulders, turn me around and make me look at the faces of hungry forest denizens. In the end, nobody stopped me. I almost flew to the decrepit wooden bridge, disbelieving my luck. The bridge's supports bathed in a spring, tarry and ice cold. The person who made this game is a linguist. The person who made this game is a poet. And honestly, I would read their work. I wouldn't understand half of it, but I'd fucking read it. I chased away bad thoughts and was trying to run from one round area light to another as fast as I could, seeking protection from electric lamps. Just like in that game where you needed to be the first to, pro to proclaim, I'm protected. What game? It's the scary glossary again. Oh, tag. A kid's game where one player needs to tag the other players by touching them with their hand, making them it. In certain zones, normally called, in certain zones normally called the ghoul, players can stay stay safe from tagging. Ghoul? Oh, you guys had safe zones in tag. We didn't. It was more like a I'm going to catch you, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. I will push you to the ground. Many a broken bones from that game, me. <laughs> okay, hello. Then I noticed something remarkably eerie. I, I would, yeah, I'd agree with that. I, yep, you said it. Good observation. In the place where the light of an inclined lamp couldn't reach, a hairy, crooked shadow came alive with a guttural roar. Why is it wearing a coat? Oh, hello. Hi. How are you? I like your coat. Is that the new winter collection? Oh, you seem mad. But the shadow didn't disappear, and even got closer. My insides were gripped by horror. I stepped back and almost fell into a snow pile. The black silhouette, on the other hand, straightened up and addressed me with a sweet voice. <laughs> huh? Sneaking around, huh? Trying to steal my soul. Words got stuck in my throat. 
Who could be talking in such a silky voice here, between the forest and the Dorman village? Will you say something, dummy? I really should have turned voices off. I keep forgetting to do that. A girl stood before me, judging from the voice and the silhouette. But I couldn't even reprimand myself on getting scared by a girl when I saw a gaping mouth under her hood and something dangerously shiny inside it. I was stunned. Hello. Oh, this took... This, this turned into, like, FNAF or some shit. This is someone's kink. And that's fine. I, it's not mine, but good for you. From the cavity of her hood, a frighteningly real fox face was staring straight at me. It's just her jaws weren't moving, and her eyes weren't blinking. <laughs> she looked at me. After a surprise like that, a nervous smile involuntarily crept onto my face. I was just going to school, and then you. What about me? Never seen a fox feed a dog? Oh, that's so cute! Look at his little face! And indeed, there was a small dog circling the girl's legs. One of the strays that were chasing me yesterday, probably. Sorry, I didn't mean to. After hearing my voice, the dog whimpered, lowered its ears, sniffed me out, and then started wagging its tail. I guess I still smelled of bologna that I ate for breakfast. I was shifting my gaze back and forth from the dog to the girl. She didn't seem scary anymore. Just weird. What's your name? I'm Anton. And you? And I'm not. <laughs> she's sassy. Oh, she's got eyes now. I see eyes under there. Ha <laughs> We're laughing. <laughs> the next time a police officer asks me about my friends at the new place, I'll tell him that I befriended a talking fox. He will not think I'm crazy. Do you live around here? In the village? The fox giggled and purred. She spun around so hard the hem of her coat lifted up. Oh. No, dummy. Foxes don't live in villages. So you live in the forest then? Have you been living under a rock? It's obvious the foxes can't survive anywhere near humans. As long as they're foxes. Her jokes were also weird. <laughs> Just like her carnival mask. Paper mache with fur glued onto it. The dog reminded us of, his, of its existence with a loud bark. I unfastened my backpack. Dad would sometimes throw food in there without my knowledge. Cookies, apples, or even my favorite crab sticks. Ew! He called it a gift from the bunny. Why? Why would he call it that? Treat from a bunny. An, the uneaten part of a business lunch or treat specifically brought for children. Parents would tell their children that a bunny asked them to deliver it, said treat. But it could also be any other animal, a squirrel or a bear, for example. That's sweet. I like that. Gift from the bunny. Haha. <laughs> the fox did definitely treat it to something, but it was probably still hungry. Why are you dressed like this so early in the morning? Going to a costume party? Oh. Oh, I've pissed her off. I've, I've annoyed her. I've made her big mad. She's big mad. The girl shrugged throwing silvery snowflakes off her nose, and her human form along with them, turning into a genuine beast. What? A real fox, agile, cunning, dangerous. Oh, hi! Ha <laughs> ha, back it up, missy! I'll fucking fight you! I'll bop a fox in the nose any day! A moment of hesitation and you'll be ripped to shreds. She'll tear you up and gulp you down without breaking a sweat. I couldn't help but just stand there as a stump. <laughs> ah. Hey! Not funny! You hurt my feelings. I was still rummaging through my backpack. My fingers, that were looking for the food for the dog, felt something soft and crumpled. You'll see. See what? The real beasts will wake up soon. You should ask them where they got their human faces. Ooh, that's creepy. Is she talking about, like, the people in school? Or is she talking about, like, my parents? Who is she talking about? I'm curious. I did my best to continue the conversation with the weird girl I didn't know. So, are you going to school? Oh my, you are a real dummy. Don't you get it? Well, I was trying to be friendly, but she can't stop mocking me. Calling me a dummy and all. I should have just moved along without paying any attention to this weirdo and his stupid dog. 
Why are you so mean? Don't answer if you don't want to. It's not like I care. Still, something froze me in place, tugged me toward the dark figure. A mysterious appearance, a voice that was velvety and just languid enough. I hope I pronounced languid correctly. I was intrigued and excited. I watched her as people watch fires burn. Oh, stop pouting. Look here. Zulka took a liking to you. The dog was digging through the snow with sharp movements, snoring loudly. What? How can he be digging and snoring at the same time? He fell asleep while doing something productive? That's relatable. <laughs> I... Haha, <laughs> yes. I'm still not sure if she's... Fake. There's something weird about her. Anyway. And maybe someone else, too. I went red again, like a boiled crayfish this time. Is she talking about herself or someone else? I hoped that the semi-dark would be able to hide my embarrassment from the girl. <coughs> I cleared my throat before asking. <coughs> and who's that person? I waited, counting my heartbeat. Do you like her? Anton, do you have a little crush? Oh, they're so precious. Oh, they're so precious. You're gonna grow up to have interesting internet history. The stray stopped rummaging through the snow. It ran to me, holding my object in her paws. Oh, it's a mitten. A mitten. Could it be the one I found in the forest? What, what is it doing here? When I looked closer, I realized that it was just my mitten. Maybe mom stuffed it in there when I was asleep. A certain lost boy immediately came to mind. Hey, do you know anything about Vova? I imagined the scene. Silhouettes dancing in the clearing. Mm -hmm. The dance on the night when Vova had disappeared. A boy who, when found, can provide a big reward and maybe save my family. I remembered my birthday when our parents promised to take me and Olia to Disneyland in Paris. But instead of a long anticipated gift, they gave me a simple brick game console, visibly embarrassed. I was crying my eyes out and demanded they take me to the promised amusement park. That was the first time when mom and dad had a big fight. My greediness shattered their relationship. Oh, so this is... I I do wonder if this is sort of a... Whether these things that he is seeing and that he's perceiving are happening to him because of... To boil it down, stress. Because they've just had a big move. It seems like the dad was involved in some legal issues and had a bit of a dodgy lifestyle because they mentioned in the first one that he was making fake passports for people and that bad people came to their house and they had to leave quickly. So that's why they're in this desolate uh, wilderness. And that's when Olia started seeing her owl in the window and Anton started not being able to sleep. And Anton's all, also afraid of going to school because he's gonna, he's worried he's gonna get bullied. And with the parents arguing with each other all the time at home, is this sort of how, talking about how children manifest stress and how it can even manifest into things like, uh, what would it be called, what would it be called, what would it be called? Damn it, I can't find my words. <laughs> Hallucinations or things like that, or things you see that aren't actually there, or things you perceive when it, it, that isn't the case kind of thing. I don't know, thinking out loud. Let me know your theories. If only I could fix everything. Gather everybody I love and take them to Disneyland. On the night Vova had disappeared, I think I saw someone looking like you dancing under my window. Ha! Ah. <laughs> ha It couldn't be true, but I felt like her mask had become even more sly. The fox was sniffing me out. Oh, that got you worried? For you? Or for someone else? Oh yeah! As soon as I thought about my sister, my chest tightened, and cold sweat started running down my spine. Well, then, listen closely, a boy named Anton. This is a big and scary forest. The fox made a decisive step forward. Hi, hello. Oh, that sounded like Jennifer Coolidge. And I'm not its only tenant. The other beasts already know about you. Beware. Welcome to see you this night too. I shouldn't have talked this evil in child form, I thought, panicking. While both you and your parents are asleep, We'll sneak to your side and dance. Something like Macarena. Hey, Macarena! 
Hi. <laughs> Good face. Oh my gosh. I don't know whether I like you or don't. I quite like you. I think you're cool. Stop scaring me though. <laughs> he saw me near his window at night. Yeah, right. Are you maybe not right in the head? Nobody would let me go outside that late. Children go missing here, you know? I touched the plastic frame of my glasses, puzzled by her silly joke. She got me scared to death. Hey, why don't you stop fondling your glasses? I was also nearsighted once. Listen to me, and maybe you'll become smarter. Okay. Remember what do they call foxes? Cunning? My words seem to hurt her. Oh. I've offended her. I've offended her greatly. I've offended her pride and her family. What dishonor on me, dishonor on my cow. I'm so sorry. Oh, um, sorry. The girl laughed with the voice of two. Can you stop laughing? If you're agile and brave enough to befriend a cunning fox, I'll help look for your vova. Oh. Whoa? Who are you? I refrained from asking that question. She wouldn't answer anyway, or she'd just lie. I really wanted to see what was behind her mask. I was becoming more and more sure that underneath it wasn't just a simple young girl. What if Fova also found a snow pile of sweets and is now rolling in it? Actually, what if he decided to stay in the forest? Hmm. I wonder, because they said that it wasn't unusual that children go missing in that forest. They said it was kind of the normal thing, which is... Okay. What if all of the animals are children who got lost or were... I don't know, lost in that forest and they lost their souls there? What if this is all really supernatural and she's one of them as well? That's why she's wearing like a foxy mask. We'll find Jovova, and you'll ask him what he found in the forest. Nothing can harm you here while you're with me. You'll see. Worms of worry writhed in my belly. Better run, whispered my mind. I don't believe you. Do you take me for a liar? Whatever. You're just like everybody else. No. Oh. She's a whiny one. The girl sounded hurt, though I didn't know if she was genuine about it. The fox turned her back to me, as if she lost all interest in me in a second. Her eyes are also gone. Please, don't get mad. Foxes can also be nice, like in fairy tales. I just need to know what kind of fox you are. The girl giggled, hiding the nose of her mask in her hands. Then follow me into the forest and you'll get to know me. But not right now. When it gets bright. I mean, your whole body is shaking, you poor thing. I don't want you to get a stroke. You can get a stroke from being cold? Oh, shit. Hey, let me accompany you to school. After hearing this, the dog barked in agreement and stopped messing with the mitten. I leaned in, trying to grab the piece of handwear that almost ran away from me. Well, if we're going the same direction... Oh, good god. We went towards school and lost dawn. Here and there, the lights came on in the windows of houses we passed, as if their inhabitants were sending us warning signs. Silhouettes lurked behind curtains. Dogs were let out an okay dogs would let out an occasional bark. Oof. I expected the fox to bring up something weird again, but she was being silent all the way as if playing some game only she was privy to with me. She would only giggle from time to time, when the dog sneezed from the snowflakes that fell on its nose. I was the <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. So, what's your name? Here it comes. Names, names, names. You people always need to put labels on everything. What name would you give to a fox like me? I don't know. But I've read about Elisa, the fox. You know what? I don't mind. I'll be Elisa. I couldn't understand if she was joking or not. I turned around, as if looking for an answer. From a dog, from a dark sky without the tinge of the dawn, my silent questions were left unanswered. 
The school's outline was already in our sight. A giant brick box stuck in the endless night. The light in its windows bore ill omens for me. The warden. Trees were guarding the schoolyard. A scream, childish laughter, and someone's whistling tore up the silence. I went here with my mom when we just moved here, and it looked cozy at the time. Empty corridors that smelled of polish. Puffy snow inside, outside, not inside, outside. High schoolers were smoking at the entrance, wearing wool caps on their foreheads and track pants. Their appearance chased away any feeling of coziness I could have gotten out of this place. Stingy looks and teeth, yellowed from nicotine, smirks. All of that was making me feel as sad as the cloudy winter morning. Being deep in my thoughts, I completely forgot about my companion. I'll wait for you at the backyard after school. Near the hanged man. I'm going straight home after school. Well, well, Antosha, I'm going to let you off the hook. But the others will creep up to you with their smiles and sink their teeth into you. Won't be able to shake them off easily. Remember my words. Ah! It's not a mask, Anton. It's not a mask. She moved her fucking mouth. Jeez. God, did you see those teeth? I think there's like ten rows. I think she's a shark. What kind of trick is this? Ah! Some kids that were running somewhere in the distance called out my name. I instinctively turned around. Oh! Oh, I'm about to get in some fights. A huge snowball whizzed past my shoulder and hit the dog. It whimpered and ran towards the spring. I barely saw its tail. It got devoured by darkness. And the fox was also gone in an instant, dissipated into the frosty air. Or did she hide in my shadow? I took a deep breath and went toward the school, toward the cutlets in dough, toward the light raining down on the snow. Time to go to school. Oh joy, I cannot wait to get learning. I have a feeling this part of the game is not going to be fun. Hello. After going up to the second floor, I noticed a crowd gathering around the notice board. Oh, am I finding out my... Oh. I thought I was going to find out my class, which, where I was going, but no, it's a Vova poster. Oh shit. Attention, child missing. Vova Machukin. Ten years old. Vova Machukin. Oh. Vova Machukin, ten years old, grade four. He left his home on January the 5th, around 4pm, and never returned. Was last seen at the bridge over the Sm Smorodina River. He was wearing an orange coat with a hood, and a black wool cap, a scarf, and mittens with green stripes. Might have had a plastic toy gun on him. Mm, okay, so if my mitten is has green stripes, it's definitely him. On the granny print, Vova looked like a dead man with a black mouth and dark, empty eye sockets. Maybe it's just the forest darkness invaded his paws and mutilated his face. Maybe. The corridor was slowly filling up with small groups of children. Nobody paid me any mind. Amid the darkness of school toilets, child voices were reciting a nursery rhyme. <laughs> Play it again! Oh, hello. A female teacher marched down the corridor with her chin raised up high. Her heels were hitting the floor like miniature hooves. A schoolgirl was following her closely. Oh, you look like a bitch. <laughs> she was probably a class rep since she was carrying around an attendance register book. Oh, it's Katya! Ekaterina! Please take this. Oh, take this, please. The teacher opened the door and the crowd rushed in, shouting and pushing each other. Ooh, hello. Out of all of them, a tall red-headed fat boy caught my attention. His face was so full of blisters, it looked like the insides of a pomegranate. A bad feeling made the hair on the back of my head rise. I've seen boys like him before. Unsettling eyes, cackling laugh. The girl who was a smaller copy of the teacher warned the boy with a wave of her hand and entered the room through the clearing of the crowd. Some boy stumbled on the doorway, and the redhead immediately shoved him. Move your legs, moron. The boy flew headfirst, flailing his hands, trying to keep balance. Oh, you're you're the bully, right? The fat so burst out laughing, and a couple of kids joined his nasty cackling. Look at your fucking teeth! The classroom sucked all of its kids in. The, the corridor stood empty. I wanted to grow roots into the windowsill. Alright. Just a handful of lampposts outside were battling the darkness, writhing like fluorescent fish in a black ocean. Maybe I can still run away. 
go outside, dissolve in the dark. I imagined myself running through the snow, how it would squeak under my boots, and how I would become lighter and lighter with every step. Ah, God. Oh, that just, oh, that gave me chills. The prim teacher looked at me over the frame of her glasses, looking clearly annoyed. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm the transfer student. I was told to come here. The snowy forest trail was winding in front of my eyes. The pines rustled. It didn't sound predatory anymore. Hmm. Hmm. She buried herself in the register and flicked through the pages. Your last name? Petrov. Huh? Why are you mumbling there? Say it clearly. Petrov. Petrov. Hmm. You're not on the list. She measured me with a long and heavy stare, as if trying to see if I was lying. I wanted to sink through the floor. Hazy faces observed all of that from the left. The classroom breathed and snorted in unison, like a living organism, like a dangerous beast. Are you sure? I don't have you in my register. My knees chose the worst time to start shaking, and I felt dizzy. I clutched my fist so hard, my knuckles became white. They told me to come to the classroom 204 and ask for Lilia Pavlo Pavlovna, class 6C. Apparently, everyone in the classroom took my words for some sort of joke, because they were all laughing. What's wrong with this school? The classroom fell silent. The kids hid their smirks for the better occasion. Why do we hire so many interns? They all know how to put lipstick all over their bulging lips. But when it comes to real problems, I have to solve everything. How did they send you here without any proper paperwork? Ugh. We've had this same thing happen so many times already. Wait here. I'll be back. Please don't leave. Take me with you. After I have a little chat with them. Oh god, why? Sit down somewhere, Anton. Just sit on the floor if you have to, at the back of the room. Just don't stand up there. Oh, for God's sake. Somebody whispered something, and stifled laughter rolled across the classroom. Wipe the board! It was easy to guess who was the main prankster here. Hey! Four eyes! Are you not only blind, but also deaf? Is your face not only fat, it's punchable? You piece of shit! I said, wipe the board. My knees weren't the only part of my body shaking anymore. I was trembling from head to toe, and I prayed for the teacher to come back sooner. My prayers were answered by the powers that be. Hi. And what should I do with you now? Where will you sit? Oh well, you can sit with Se Semyon, I guess. Semyon. He's alone anyway. Is this Semyon right in front of the chat box? Text box? No way. The fatso put his backpack on the seat beside him in defiance, scratched his belly and smirked. Are you back to your old tricks? Should I call your grandma here again? The classroom went silent. And what's she gonna do? I'll be the one to do something if she doesn't. Put away your backpack, now. Semyon didn't move a muscle. He started studying the portraits of writers on the wall, looking bored. I needed to do something, to resolve this somehow. To save myself. Why do you need to do anything? It's the teacher's fucking job. If he's misbehaving, send him to the fucking principal or whoever. Send him home. Get his fucking grandma in. I cleared my throat and continued in a st stifled voice that sounded nothing like me. I can sit in the last row. I think there's a free seat. The teacher snored loudly. She had fallen asleep by this point. Fine. Go there for now. And you, Baburin, I'll have a talk with you later. Come to me after classes. You'll be, you'll be on cleaning duty. Got it? Semyon forced out a twisted smile. Juicy pimples were growing on the tip of his nose, ripe for the taking. Ew! <laughs> I took my seat at the back, at the last table, where I was met with a pile of old posters. The outcasts took their seats, and the class was ready to start. Now this is settled, let's start the class. The fatso turned back to me. His stare told me about long days, weeks, and months of endless bullying. I got my eyes on you, said his watery look. Well, that's just joyful, ain't it? Great. Ew. That's fucking rank. Good God, just take your book and beat him with it. After just a couple of lessons, I've already noticed a huge yellow spit stain in my notebook. Ew. Then, at the cafeteria, this Semyon accidentally spilled a class of compot on me. 
and then he flailed his hands around at the exit in the toilet, so some of the liquid from his hands would get on me. Ew. Just before the final period for today, Demian pushed me into a buzzing crowd of girls from our class. Oh. Well, this turned into a slice of life anime real quickly. <laughs> Katya! Oh, they do actually shorten her name to Katya. <laughs> I immediately stepped back, dying from embarrassment. I'm sorry, are you alright? I... Then she suddenly put her hands on her hips. Will you look at him? Groping me in front of everyone. Okay. I'll tell my mom. They'll expel you, pervert. And I was hoping you'd actually have a change of character, and even though you look like a bitch, you would actually be really nice. But turns out, no, my first judgement was correct. I didn't mean to. He pushed me. We all saw that, you know. No blind among us. She stared at my glasses while showing me a creepy smile. I started to fume on the inside, but Samyon had cooled my head. I pushed you? You sure? He walked up to me lazily, his breath full of sunflower seeds and rotten teeth, and then pushed me to the ground. Oh, good god. Like this, huh? What you gonna do now? The delinquent towered over me, as if saying, Come on, hit me. Let me see you try. Try it. Go. Fucking try it. I'm gonna fight back. This bitch don't get to spit in no notebooks around me. Fuck you. Listen, you. My throat went dry, my lips weren't responding to my will, and my voice was akin to a stifled squeal. Semyon wore a mocking smile. Good God, brush your fucking teeth. You're so gross. Go on, four eyes. Why did you stop? We're all waiting. If you ever touch me again, Semyon slowly stuck out a finger with a massive sig 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 sign it and pushed it to my forehead. What? Sorry, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I did. So what? If you ever do it again, here. One more. And again. Anton! He was poking me with his finger so hard that my head tilted backward. I must not cry. Or I'll be done for. What will a wimp like you do to me? My vision went blurry. My soles tore off from the floor. I rushed forward and threw a random punch without looking. Oh, ho, ho. Yes! What I saw when I opened my eyes was beautiful and horrifying at the same time. Semyon was holding his ear and blinking in amazement. Was I the first person to rebel against his absolute rule? Stop there. Oh, hello. I needed to run, but I was already surrounded by his cronies. Lilia Pavlovna. Lilia Pavlovna. Lilia Pavlovna. Petrov Baburina ударил. Oh, you are just a fucking bitch. He got really close to me. The smell of rotten teeth washed over me. Ew. Tibia. You. Bizdiet. Fucking done. His voice was evil and dangerous, like a kettle with boiling fat with the lid off. I was waiting to get hit, counting the thumps of my heart and guessing where his fist will go. The solar plexus, the jaw, the nose. But he just turned around and walked off. A thought, cold and sober, extremely rational, popped up into my head. I'm gonna get killed today. Oops. After the classes, I was late to leave the school on purpose. Samyon didn't attend the last period, so I was hopeful. What if he decided to dodge the cleaning duty and ran home, forgetting all about me? I heaved a sigh of relief, then someone, like someone on death row whose execution was delayed by a day, but I didn't let myself forget his tone, his vengeful gaze and his scary, electrified smirk. While the other students were leaving the school, laughing loudly, I was pretending to look through my books near our window. I was staring outside, nervous. Semyon was nowhere to be found in the front yard or near the school gate. I didn't really believe I was this lucky, so I decided to be extra cautious and stayed for some more time in the gradually less crowded corridor. All of the bustle moved to the first floor. There was a skeleton, peeking out of the biology classroom, some jokes to put a cap with an American condor on its head. The sound of running water was coming out of the bathroom. I was the only person left in the whole school. I'm not alone. A sudden thought came to mind. I remembered the lost boy. His portrait was hanging near the announcement board. I remembered his smile. He's starting to look creepier. I don't remember his face being this fucking creepy. 
his watchful eyes, and the fact he's most likely already dead. Привет. Hello. I shuddered and turned around. Fofa? No, a girl. At first, my eyes stumbled upon the black violin case. Then I noticed a girl from my class was holding it. Oh, she's beautiful! Look at her! She's so pretty! Fall in love! Now! She sat in the first row for the second column. I could swear I caught her looking at me a couple of times. And I was sneaking glances at her myself. <laughs> she spent all her breaks just like me, staying in the classroom or looking out the window, or drawing something in her green notebook. Здравствуй. Hello. I turned red and pretended I was studying the pattern on the wooden floor. Ah. It was cool, the way you hit him. It was an accident, almost. I started shoving books into my backpack to occupy myself with something. Semyon wasn't like that before. He was also transferred here, just recently. His grandma told me that it almost felt like he went mad. Most of our classmates fear Semyon, did you know? But you're different. You're brave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right, what a hero. A hero that's been standing in the hallway for half an hour to avoid a beating. The girl looked at me with her clear, attentive eyes. Do you live over the river? In that wooden house? Yeah. It must be scary living there. And you also have to cross the forest. I wouldn't be able to do that. I shivered at the mention of the forest. I thought of intertwining branches of the snake-like trail and the endless darkness that spreads like mold among the crooked trees and conjured up a blatant lie. It's not that scary. What's so scary about it for you? She smiled after a brief pause, as if brushing off a daydream. Well, actually, never mind. My name's Paulina, by the way. And I'm Anton. I already knew that. Hey, Anton. She stumbled, as if trying to decide whether she should continue. What are you doing after school? My chest felt prickly after her innocent question, yet somehow it felt pleasant. Nothing much. I stopped mid-sentence. Okay. Whatever's happening is beautiful. Oh, hi. Oh. Wait, is Paulina Alyssa? Because they have the same eyes, I think. Alyssa's predatory smile flashed in front of my eyes. The playful eyes in the slits of her mask were probably just a product of my imagination, though. What if that fox girl is waiting for me after school? Or was it another one of her weird jokes? I wonder if she's hiding a big red tail under her coat. I suddenly got covered with beads of sweat, like after a PE class. I wanted to take a shower, as if just thinking of the fox girl made me dirty, lured me into the forest's embrace. I have a violin lesson, and then I'll be free. My grandpa hired me as a private tutor. Oh, hired me a private tutor. Our music teacher is a violinist, and he doesn't have anyone to teach here, except for me. She waved her hand. She waved her free hand in the air, imitating the movement of a bow on violin strings. I could almost hear the music. I chased Alyssa out of my head. I looked at Paulina's lips, catching her every word, stunned from the unusual sensations. They were warm, soothing, and tingly. They say there's a serial killer on the loose in the village. Normally, Grandpa would escort me home from school, but he's been sick lately. I snuck a glance at Vova's photo. I swear that kid's picture is looking more and more evil. I mean, I'm not a coward, it's just... I think I'd be safer together with you. Will you go home with me, Anton? There it was. Finally, everything that I read about in adventure books, everything I dreamed of, was seeping into my life. A mysterious crime, a beautiful stranger, and a heroic duel. A duel. Ah! God. Oh, the music changed. Thinking of Semyon instantly sobered me up, returning me back to Earth. It started shaking under my feet like the deck of a ship. If only I could rise to the occasion in front of Paulina. 
because no matter how brave I was trying to act, it was obvious for both of us that I wouldn't stand a chance against a guy like him. Or I, would, I won't stand stand a chance against a big guy like him. I doubt I'll be able to today. You know, Semyon's waiting for me outside. I need to deal with him, one on one, like a man. Nonsense. Paulina brushed some hair off her forehead, and I sensed a weak blackberry aroma. Paulina was like water when you were thirsty. You gulped it down greedily, but you could never get enough. I remember the summer evenings at the country house, the fire's pungent smoke, the berries hanging over our fence from the neighbours, and a soft cover of pine needles under my soles. Those were the peaceful days, when I felt completely safe. My mum, resting in the hammock, my dad, putting meat on the skewers. Could I have foreseen the upcoming catastrophe in the crackle of the coals, in our laughter, in that fleeting smell of July? Could I have seen how fragile that world was? Do you really think that savage will give you a fair fight? He'll just swarm you with his friends, without giving you a chance to catch a breath. Paulina suddenly flashed me a cunning smile. But if we go together, they will be put off. I'm not the only... I'm not only the first violin of this village. I'm also a girl. I've heard from a delinquent I know that he'll never attack someone when there's a girl around. Can you imagine? They have this weird code of honor. A delinquent, you know, I replied, worried. Is he better than me? Taller? More handsome? Oh! I have to go to music class. She made a couple of steps and stopped. Amazing. Paulina didn't even look like those beauty from the magazine posters, or the actresses from the movies. But in the flickering light of the ceiling lamps, she looked prettier than all of them. Can you play anything? My parents brought me a guitar a couple years ago. I immediately remembered my meager attempts at making music. Um, uh, um, change. We're all waiting for change. The guitar got lost somewhere as if refusing to move from the old house near the forest. I think my parents gave it away to someone that needed it more. I don't, sadly. A pity. Oh well, I'll be going. Bye! Oh, the way he talks about Paulina is so sweet. He's literally writing fucking poetry in his head about this girl he just met. <laughs> He's absolutely head over heels in love with her. He's known her for three minutes. <laughs> But also, I don't know if I trust her yet. I don't know if I trust her. Maybe she's like Semyon's sister or something, but I still don't know if I trust her at all. What should I do? Polina could become my friend. The first one in this new place. And besides, she may be in real danger of meeting a killer, and I'll be her defender. Her knight. And even though my inner voice was hesitant and whispered about running away from the killers, lurking in the woods at night, Polina was worth the risk. But the red cunning fox was also intriguing. She promised me to look for Vova, and that could get me a reward. A lot of money that will almost guarantee the peace of my family. Gifts for Olya. I imagine my sister, happy like those girls who get prizes from the Suponev in the finest hour. She'll be dancing with the famous singers and maybe a new popular boys band like Eva Nushki International. Mom and Dad hugging each other in the Ostankino Pavilion, and then all of us going to Disneyland. Paulina or Alyssa. Okay, look. I don't want to deprive a young boy of his first love. It's an important time. But there's also a lady with a, f a fox head running around who is also intensely interesting. <laughs> I think for this playthrough anyway, I'm going to pick Alyssa. And if you don't agree with that, I'm sure there are other amazing playthroughs on YouTube that you can watch to find out what happens if you choose Paulina. But I'm going to pick Alyssa, because I want to figure out what the fuck she is, what the fuck she's about, and whether that's her actual fucking head or not. <laughs> and we can find Vova! It's a win-win. I froze when I saw a silhouette in the second floor window. It must be Paulina, gliding with a bow on violin strings, with her head slightly tilted to the side. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh no, if I didn't choose Paulina and now she's walking home alone when she asked me to walk with her because she's scared, am I going to come into school tomorrow and she's going to be gone? Oh shit, I didn't think about that. Oh piss. Oh no, I'm sorry if that's the case. I'm saying it now, I'm sorry. Oh, hello. Hi. 
How are you doing? Why are you hanging out in the back of a school, you creep? I looked at the wall. There was a hanged man drawn under the black line made of re resin. Someone was playing here. Something was scribbled on both sides of the man. Escape, fear, truth. Come closer, sweetheart. It took me a while to realize where the sound was coming from. It's my girl! My eyes darted back and forth, looking at the empty cul-de-sac and the school's backyard, at the windows that reflected sunlight at the snow. Okay, is she under the snow? One of the snow piles started trembling, like a volcano before it erupts. Ha! Why would you do that to me? In the blink of an eye, the white crust crumbled and a fox jumped out of the fucking snow. She made a gracious bow, enjoying the effect her appearance had had on me. Great, good for you. I couldn't even imagine that thinking about girls with tails can be this. I don't know what to compare it to. What? Something infectious? Toxically sweet? <laughs> Fight back or your heart is in my bag. She giggled so enthusiastically that it forced me to smile. Oh, come on. Oh, she looks so happy. I quickly rolled a ball of snow and threw it at Alyssa. She tried to dodge it, but it was too late. And it hit her on the shoulder. You insolent boy. <laughs> yeah, that's me. The fox slowly backed down, trying to arm herself. You are sly, but I am a fox. I think out of the box. Her retribution was swift. A snowball arched its way above the snowy yard and the ravens flying in the air. I wanted to duck, but slipped and fell onto my knees. And while I was getting up, I caught a huge chunk of snow to my face. And now, it's burned from a freezing texture. Ow. It shouldn't hurt this much. She brushed off my hood as if to show compassion, took me by the elbow and helped me to get up. Carefully, with kindness, uncharacteristic for a child, she took my glasses, blew away the snowflakes that were stuck to them, and handed them back. <laughs> now we're even, Tosha. Only people who were close to me called me that. And I haven't even seen her real face. Didn't know her last name, what class she was from, and if she had a real tail under her coat. Important questions, really. Want to get ahead? We were going to look for Volva, remember? We'd better hurry before my parents start looking for me. The fox let out a lazy yawn. Ah. Parents! God, don't be so boring. Let's play for a bit. You're always bored at home anyway. And how do you know that? It's not even a secret. It's always way too boring being locked up in a house full of adults. I get all jittery from both houses and parents. See? Her furry fox brow started twitching. I faked a laugh in reply because I took too long decide to decide if being able to move parts of her mask like that was genuinely funny or not. Come on, Tosha. Don't be scared. I can see that you want to play. And if you win... The fox girl got dangerously close to me and stood on her tiptoes, almost touching my face with her rough little nose. Playful fires danced deep in her eyes. Her smell was nice, berries and something else, almost too sweet for comfort. Maybe that's what independence and freedom smell like. If you win, I'll be your guide. Believe me, I have lots of things to show you. And I'm sure we'll find your vova, for one. I felt as if a giant invisible spring bent inside me. My tummy hurt, but the sensation was somehow not exactly unpleasant. It was so weird. I just had a conversation with Paulina, and now Alyssa was going to drag me along with her. And, and what if I lose? I'll claw out your soul, softy. Okay. I'm glad you're having fun. Do you want to play, little fox? Well then, let's play. I armed myself with a snowball and chased the fleeing fox girl. I saw a familiar street with wooden posts that didn't look scary anymore. They were just logs covered in snow. If I were to shout now, the guard dogs would start barking and their owners would peek out from their windows. Alyssa's small silhouette was mocking me from far away, so it was useless to try hitting her with a snowball for now. A waste of ammunition. Oh, there he is, my little buddy. Are you okay from the snowball that hit you? I'm so sorry. She sniffed around, marked the naked black currant bush, and ran towards the next one. Huh? Alyssa showed up from under the hill. Zulka, follow me, girl. So Zulka is the dog's name. The dog's ears perked up. It barked in agreement and followed the girl's head. Lead. Lead. <laughs> We ran farther and farther, exchanging snowballs, laughing and stumbling. 
The winter forest rose in front of us, reaching for the low clouds with its treetops, where you were at the edge of its shadow, bony and almost material. The fox hid behind the thick pine, clearly trying to get close to me and shove some snow under my collar. It was a good plan, but Zulka, who was running circles around her, gave away her position. I broke off a dry branch and decided to act even trickier. I put my hat on it and brought it to the side of the pine to make her think it's my head. Clever! I bit my lip to stop myself from laughing, then jumped out from the other side and threw a snowball point blank at her face. <laughs> Alyssa probably cracked my plan right away, but still let me win 3 to 1, pleading for mercy while also choking from laughter. Please, mercy. I'm dying. Okay, okay, I'll let you live. Thank you, oh valiant knight. She pretended to bow to me, and then grabbed two full handfuls of snow, and like any dying warrior, threw them my way in a last ditch effort. I dodged her attack easily, <laughs> laughing uncontrollably, and being mad at the same time. I finished her with two precise shots. He let me live, huh? Learn how to do it. If you Learn me how to do it if you're so smart. Shut up, you're already dead. Ha! When did that stop me? Let's play something more interesting. Oh, she made a blind throw and dashed behind the trees. One, two, time to play with you. Three, four, five. The owl will arrive. I hesitantly moved toward the windfall. Six on the end, the wolf's grey fear will stand. I thought I saw a real tail glide across the bushes. As if on a leash, I rushed to the intertwined branches that helped Alyssa hide. I had to move them, tear them off like spiderweb. Branches sprang back in my face, but it felt like they were caressing my cheeks instead of hitting them. I was sweaty, but still had a lot of stamina left. I'll make sure to catch you, little fox. Alyssa's voice wandered behind the windfall. Seven, eight, got you on my plate. Seems like I underestimated you. I thought you were just a boy. Confident that she was behind the dry pine, I rushed to intercept her. But the local acoustics tricked me. Her voice was already echoing from the other side. And you're a bunny. So nimble, so cute. A snowball flew at me from the shadows, whistling past my ear. I'll show you a bunny. Yeah, do that. Show me. The bright fur coat of a fox flashed near a rotten stump. I rushed there, jumping over a hole in the earth. I know what you mean. My lips started trembling, as if I was a hound chasing its prey. One jump and the fox was in my embrace. So smooth, so desirable. What? Fine, fine, you win. She leaned against the scratchy bark and started puffing. Please, let's have a break. You're too fast, too strong. Too tasty. Satisfied, I put my hands on my sides, waiting for the spoils of war from the defeated girl. I needed to catch up to Alyssa, to tackle her and subdue her. Tear off her mask and see everything. Okay, this is getting weird now. Poor little bunny jumps around in the wet pine forest, afraid of getting eaten by the big grey wolf. Thinking of hot summer, keeping his ears low. Sneaking glances at the hidden sky. The sky really did appear under the tree. The sky really did disappear under the trees. I moved using Zalka's, Zulka's barks as a guide, since she was following her owner closely. I was catching up. The same trail I imagined at school was sneaking under my feet. It turned out that running like there's no tomorrow was not easy. It was so easy. Faster, higher, faster. I felt like there was a well of untapped powers inside me and then I drew from it. My muscles were buzzing, my lungs felt bigger and I felt much stronger overall. Even my vision became sharper. I saw every icy branch, every dent in the bark. Are you a shape shifter? Something vivid was lying near the bushes. A piece of clothing. Another colorful spot to the right. Alyssa was losing, losing her clothes on the run, like shedding her skin. Excited to no end, I took off my mittens with my teeth. I'll get naked and feel the wind to the last drop. Faster. What's happening? This is getting weird. I reached out to take off my hat to throw away everything that stopped me from running wild in this endless forest. The backpack slowed me down, so I threw it in the snow along with all the pens that were inside, with all the notebooks, all of my drawings on the sidelines, and a dinosaur for Olya. Olya! Suddenly a clear picture appeared in my mind. 
My sister, standing still near the window, basking in the setting sun, her small palms pressed against the glass, leaving marks after warming it up. She could have warmed up the whole world like that. She's looking at the tiger, repeating my name. Dosha! Dosha! I stopped, took a deep breath, and realized how rash and stupid I was, trying to undress in the middle of a forest while chasing a fox. I returned to get backpack. I returned to get the backpack I dropped, as if it was part of my being. Once more, I remembered how much my sister hated being left alone, how she begged me to come home faster. What kind of brother am I? Running in the same forest I used to scare my sister with? I'm having fun while she's not even allowed out the front door. She's trapped in a cage watching the same cartoons over and over again. Dosha! Dosha! Yes, Olya? Dosha, Dosha, where are you? I don't like this anymore. Oh, hi. <sighs> from the darkness behind the pines, just like cavemen from their cave, appeared smirking Semyon with a bunch of his cronies. Yo, Antoshka. <laughs> Thought you could slip away, huh? Catch this four eyes. They surrounded me like a carnivorous pride, making me step back. The smell of sweat and tobacco attacked my nostrils. The inside of my mouth felt salty, as if I'd licked a battery. Alisa. Alisa. The name of my companion turned into a stifled cough. The pines were swaying back and forth like solemn guardians. I was frantically looking everywhere. I dreamt of finding that fox among the trees and expected her to come to my rescue. But only the wind replied to my pleas. Where's Alisa? What did you do to her? I shut it upon hearing my voice. It's sounding unnatural, primal, and scary. Who the fuck is Alyssa? Did you hit your head? Whatever, we'll fix you right up. The fatso spat through the gap in his teeth and shoved me so hard I hit my back against a tree. So, feeling better now? It can't be. Did Alyssa really lure me into this trap? To these bastards? No, no, I can't believe this. Looky here, guys. He's not so brave here compared to the school. A total wimp. You fucked with the wrong guy, transfer student. That's a nice ring you got there. Can I steal it? Semyon was moving toward me, readying his fist. I'm about to ready mine. Oh. In that moment, the other delinquent in his track pants made a loud whistle, and the hulking boy lowered his hand. It was unexpected. Seems like Babarin wasn't the leader of this gang. In reality, they were all listening to the boy who was looking like a small carnivorous animal with very strong and sharp teeth. He probably decided to have some fun at my expense first. Well, we're not saying that. Is this your Alyssa? Only then I noticed Zulka behind, beside my legs, trembling from the cold, sna snow plastered all over her face. Sorry, I can't read. Are they gonna do something to the fucking dog? Please, no, I don't, I don't want that. The delinquent squatted in front of the dog and beckoned her with his hand. Oh my. Alyssa, come here, you flea ridden. <laughs> the others let out nasty laughs. The dog's ears perked up and she st started carefully moving closer. No, Zulka, run! Иди сюда. Yeah, come here, I've got something for you. If that fox doesn't get back here and rip these guys apart in the next fucking slide. The dog didn't even have a chance to sniff him when this animal abused it, caught it by the ear, and kicked it right under the tail so hard it flew into the nearest snow pile, squealing. I feel sick. The whole gang burst out laughing and my heart got encrusted in ice. Even the birds that were perched up on the tree branches let out frightened calls. Fucking smash their faces in. At the edge of my vision, I saw something flash in the illusory twilight of the sleeping forest. Or was that just the bushes moving their icy branches under the wind's influence? <laughs> Ew. I don't want to read that. I don't want anything more to do with you. I don't want to look at your stupid fucking face anymore. I want to smash it in. Let me kick the fucking thing one more time. Don't you dare. Where's Alyssa? Two negatives will make a positive. Shut up. 
but the stray was already nowhere to be seen. What? Are you an idiot? Go and show the Four Eyes his place. In a way he'll understand. Yeah, he fucking owes you. This wimp whacked you in front of the whole class. Sure thing. Samian brought a sizeable signet ring up to my face with some geometric shapes carved into it. It's a cult! It's always a cult. In a moment, I'll hit your face so hard it'd leave a mark for the rest of your life. Where did all of my inner strength and bravery go? A whizzy whisper left my lips. Stop. And my head tilted forward, hitting Samian's fist. Red sparks flew from my eyes. I fell, and I hit the sharp crust of ice, and the fatso stepped on my hand, stopping me from getting up. A painful groan has left my throat. Did you hear him whimper? Is he acting? I started to lose breath from anger and resentment. The pain was growing. My ear was hot, and pulsating pain was shooting through it. Like it was cut off, and a ball of nettle was sewn in its place. Why so silent, Antoshka? Come on, tell us. At this moment, I felt unbridled rage, the amalgamation of my anger. Yes, this fucking go! Come on! Like the sprouts ink, it rose up from the depths of my mind, filling all of my thoughts. Whoa, spooky. Morons. Did you know that my dad... And he's a vet. He'll kill the likes of you with his eyes closed. One word from me and he'll... Romka lifted his arm, stopping my torrent of lies and made a couple of steps forwards. <sighs> Semyon slowly backed off, giving me an opportunity to stand up. Did he believe me? Or was he confused by my face that was twisted by rage? A vet, you say. My dad also fought in the war. In Afghan. And yours? Mine too. Oh really? And what force did he serve in? I stumbled. My fear got my rage by the throat and spilled its blood. He's full of shit, Romka. Sure as fuck, eh? Did you think I'm so easy to trick? I can see through all of your lies, little bitch. There was a nasty smile on his face now. This didn't bode well for me. Well, you've asked for this. A teacher saved you at school, but here... You're fucked. That's right. Pray that they find your dead body come spring, eh? If only you'd stayed silent, you wouldn't have lost a hair. Hitting fatso is one thing. But fucking around with stuff like Afghan, where my dad spent time under fire, on international duty in fucking Dash de Margo. Give him a good pounding, Sjoma. The delinquents closed in on me again and I ended up in front of Semyon. Blood was pumping in my temples. The branches were swaying back and forth as if whispering something, giving me hope. I gritted my teeth, fighting the thought that I looked silly, and took a boxing stance I often saw in the movies. What are you? Fucking Mike Tyson? That's right, bitch, and you're about to get... T t t smacked. That was my first... This was my first ever fight. I'll remember it for the rest of my life, if I don't kick the bucket, of course. At the edge of my vision, I noticed the darkness around us writhe again, as if someone was wa walking back and forth. I sensed Roma's claws grab my backpack. Give me your shit, Tony. It'll get in the way. I was about to refuse, not wanting to cooperate with the bastard. But then he fished a butterfly knife out of his pocket, and with one smooth motion, put its blade to my neck after spinning it. Hey, easy, buddy. I can make it painful. What the fuck is up with these kids? They're children! Romka pulled with all his might, and my backpack ended up in his hands. Calm and relaxed. An insidious smile crept onto his face as he looked into my backpack. Are you hiding something from us? Some rat stole my school shoes. Let's see if it was you. And what's this? Romka gave me a dubious smile. What? What about it? So what do we have here? My text and notebooks fell in the snow. He was holding my backpack in one hand and something weird in his other hand. It looked like a... 
Oh, a mask. Rum, Rumma lifted it high, as if showing to someone else, to someone in the treetops, in the twilight among the trees. An old bunny mask. Long, worn-out ears, barely visible nose, and whisk whiskers, mangy fur on the sides. Where did it come from? Who put it there? <laughs> Samian laughed. <laughs> it's way past New Year's, moron. Or are you really a loony? It's not mine. How come it's not? It was in your backpack. Rumka was watching the scene unfold with an evil smile on his face. You know what? Put it on. Why? Because I'm telling you to. You'll hop like a bunny for us. Yeah, come on. Or we'll leave you pantless. Anything but this. What if someone from our class will pass by? I won't. Sioma, put it on him. Here. It'll fit better this way. Ew! He hurled a huge portion of spit on the inside of the plastic bunny face and put it close to mine. That what is wrong with you? Mask almost looked even more disgusting now. Yet, yeah, despite everything. I felt like it was a chance for salvation. It could become my second skin. If only I was to put it on. If only I was to put my face in its bumpy surface and the fur will glitter and the eyes will, and the ears will become alive. I just need to put it on and Samuel and his friends will be gone. Forever. Oh, I don't know. Oh, piss. Here's the thing, though. I kind of feel like... Because I don't know how that mask got there. So maybe if I put it on, it's actually some sort of... A part of this cursy thing that's going on in the forest. I put it on. I become the bunny... Bunny demon. Like Alyssa's the fox demon. And then they all come and help me. And I, I win. I'll put it on. Even though I do want to tell him to fuck off really badly. I will put it on. Because I, I want to see what happens. I reached out. My hand wasn't shaking anymore. <laughs> Semyon handed me the mask and added an evil laugh. The fur felt warm to the touch, just like expected. I got goosebumps. Electric energy flowed through my spine. This is it. My salvation. A voice whispered to me from the well of my subconscious. Just put it on and nobody will hurt you. The forest froze, gazing at me with cracks in the bark. I acted slowly. I took off my glasses, got rid of the nasty spit on the paper mache. There was movement inside the bunny face, as if something was trying to break out, and I needed to help it. I lifted up the mask and started moving it towards my flaming cheeks, just like in that movie with Jim Carrey. The mask had power. The mask had strength. Cotton touched my skin. It enveloped my skull. My nose. It took the shape of my face. And it smelled like animal layer and pine. My lips up touched some sort of hard, wavy material. My armor. Strangely enough, through the slits of the old carnival mask, I was able to see as good as through my glasses. Oh, I've got superpowers, I'm a bunny! A trio of boys, frozen in the clearing. Snowflakes, frozen in the air. The trees, whose shadows formed black streams towards me and a weird silhouette in the early twilight behind the windfall. In all that silence, Semyon nervously whispered, uh, Hey, guys, what's, what's up with him? I broadened my shoulders. My muscles felt like they were made of steel. Invisible plumes of fog flew toward me, breaking off the trees. I was absorbing the forest's power with every pore of my body. I smiled underneath the mask. No, I showed my teeth. Oh, I want to see what I look like. My fists were itching. My stomach was growling. He's turning. You asked for this. I made a step forward. Semyon carefully stepped towards me, as if he was walking on thin ice. A trail from my dreams was weaving itself in front of me again. Endless, alluring. It was beckoning me away from all the problems to the new wonderful world. The magic world of Neverland. I pulled on the zipper, opened my coat, and threw it to the snow with a fast motion. Then growled. I felt like something... Okay, well, the growling wasn't that... I felt like something was frantically looking for the exit underneath my skin. I went towards Semyon. He's turning! Fuck. What's happening? I want to see! Turning... 
Oh. Mudaka! Well. <laughs> Damn it. I got excited then. The clearing blew up in hysteric laughter. Ha ha ha. So funny. Biasha was clusting, clutching his stomach. Roma smirked, shaking his head. And Samian, who was laughing the most of the three, spat on his knuckles and waved his fist like a club. Why does he have an obsession with spitting? What is wrong with you? You need to brush your fucking teeth. You are such a moron, Tosha. Ow. A fist collided with my mask. The fur didn't dampen the blow at all. There was no power, no magic smoke coming from the pines. I flew towards the bushes and landed on my butt. My vision, no longer bolstered by adrenaline, returned to normal. Now that was something. I thought he'd get on all fours and tear us to bits. Like a carrot. Yeah. Did you see that? Did you? Does this count as him hopping? This was even better. I sobbed. The mask had one advantage. If I cried now, no one would see my tears. What a loony. You belong in a loony house. For animals. Samyon put his knee into the snow pile. And he ripped the glasses out of my numbed fingers. Give my glasses back. I won't make it home. Bullshit. Haven't you heard about bunnies? Haven't you heard that bunnies have a good sense of smell? So don't worry, just use that. Samyon shoved the trophy into his pocket and flashed me a toothy grin. Besides, bunnies don't wear glasses. Now scram. Mm -hmm. I stood up, still wobbly. Trees became a blurry dark wall. Three bright silhouettes were wobbling around me. There were black spots on them. Their eye sockets and their mouths but it looked to me like there was more of them than there should be. I turned to the forest. Semyon's boot came to my rescue, kicking me in the butt and quickening my shameful retreat. I threw the mask into a ravine out of spite. And then zigzagged through the firebreak, alone in a giant snow-laden world. The trunks around me bent in all directions. Their treetops disappeared into the forest, into the darkness above me. The sky was pushing me down. I wanted to cry, but my eyes were completely dry now. Only sadness and longing were left, a desire to bury myself under the snow or leave for the Neverland to join in Bova and Senya. Who's Senya? I didn't care where to go, just somewhere far away from here. Somewhere very far away. Hmm. Hey, what's this? Where are your glasses, Anton? Did you lose them? See, I... How can you be so careless? Do you think I own a money printing press? Yeah, right. You'll be wearing your old glasses. Until next year. All your rush to me. I saw a fox! Surprise akin to a shotgun blast. I could only flap my lips in reply. A cup shattered into many little pieces with a loud thang. My mom let it fall from her hands. Her face was pale and her eyes were glued to the ground. This pause, just a split second, felt like an eternity. Then my mom spoke with disappointment. First it was an owl, now it's a fox. Will you ever get tired of this? But it's true! She was so fluffy. She stood on her back legs, near the hedge, just like a person. The fox called my name, but then mom came and she fled. There was no fox. Stop making things up. Don't go near her. If it was necessary, I was ready to shake my sister as if she was a doll made of cloth. What's wrong, Tosha? Don't go! You hear me? Mom entered the hallway and gave me a surprised look. I hesitated. Well, a fox will bite you. I remembered fairy tales where foxes used to kidnap children. I imagined my Alyssa, liberated, carnivorous, running through the forest, the night forest with a dangling sack in her hand. It wasn't a real fox. Tell him, Olya. She stood on two legs and she wore a dress. And she was real. See? Mom showed us a tired smile, as if it was the only explanation we needed. I also forced myself to smile. 
My smile was like a thin piece of soap right before it dissolves completely on your palm. But when I was left alone with my sister, I whispered, If you see her again, run. I shut my eyes and threw the vitamins in my mouth, washed them down with water. Please, stop driving me mad, please. I was doing my homework on a Friday evening, like usual. I've already finished the hardest part. There was only my art homework left, my favorite subject. Oh, I get to draw. Oh, that's neat. Nah, <laughs> said Triceratops. I needed to draw some sort of magic beast. <laughs> I wanted a dino to draw a dino at first. Okay, it got weird. Great. I wanted to draw a dino at first, but my brush reached towards the orange paint all by itself. I don't like that fox. One stroke after another, the picture of a fox slowly started forming on the piece of paper. She was almost popping out of the snow white sheet. She stood on her back legs and wore a sly smile. My brush moved again, drawing a fluffy tail. A moment later, it dropped out of my weak hand. I don't like this. After I finished my drawing, I spent a while studying it in surprise, as if I couldn't understand where this red beast came from. And the longer I looked, the scarier the smile felt. Carnivorous. Fake. Like the smiles women from adult magazines. Like the smiles women from adult magazines sold in press kiosks back in the city. An alluring smile that masked deep seated malice. And the fox's eyes turned out red, as if bloodshot. They looked more like a bullet holes they show in action movies. I don't remember drawing eyes like that. I moved away from the table and the lamp's light reflected from the wet paint. The drawing was glossy. I felt like the fox was watching me. I hate this. Waiting. Anton. Ah, Dad! Why? Oh my god! Do you want death? Are you deaf? I, I was just thinking. I'll ask you again. Have you seen your sister? She's hiding somewhere again. Something moved under my bed and I froze. All your dirty face peeked out with a finger pressed to her lips. <laughs> Olya, Olya, I can see you. Also, the whispering doesn't help. Get out of there, you're covered in dust. Olya crawled out from under the bed and started dusting off her stockings, looking down. Let's go. I'll read you a fairy tale. Keep you company until you fall asleep. I want to sleep with you, not in that room. It's... Mom entered the room. What? The owl again? And what do you think? Olya, it won't come anymore. I chased it away. Olya shook her head in defiance. You didn't. And it will come. It said it, it'll come every night. Oh, it talks now. Olya ignored the question and then asked with newfound determination. Can I sleep with you? Please. This will be the last time. Didn't you say that yesterday was the last time? Olya, you're already a big girl. She says Olga there. <laughs> Why don't you let her sleep in my room? I thought the idea was great, but Olya shook her head again. And now I spell like Ole. No, I don't want your room. It watches you too. Great, thanks. You couldn't have warned me about this? Thanks. Jesus Christ. I felt goosebumps all over my body. Enough. There's no owl. You're sleeping in your own room tonight. Got it? Mom, please. Please. Oh yeah, Mom took Olya's hand and tried to lead her out of my room. Let's go, sweetie. Don't bother your brother. Olya clutched the bed's head with her free hand. Please, please, please. Oh, God. I don't want to go to it. Mom was tugging Olya toward herself, but she didn't budge. Only the bed's head squeaked in agony. <clears throat> Dad intervened by picking Olya up and carrying her out of the room, despite her desperate protests and pleas. <laughs> I listened to them struggling to make my little sister go to bed for a while. In the end, my parents gave up and let Olya sleep with them. 
but it was surely the last time. Ever. When everybody settled down, I was lying in my room, thinking about Olya's words. It's watching you too. I felt uncomfortable. I barely managed to calm down only after closing the curtains in my room. But as soon as I closed my eyes, the memories of my day started jumping around in front of me. <sighs> I was in the middle of the stuffy school corridor. I could see the literature classroom from here. The faces of dead classical writers on their portraits. The prim and regal pose of our homeroom teacher, Lilia Pavlovna. And around that corner was her daughter, Katya, a snitch and a gossip, eagerly waiting for me. Hey, hey transfer student, transfer student. What do you want, Katya? She got on her tiptoes and started swaying, while hiding her hands behind her back, and then asked me with a fake smile on her face, Can I ask you something? Why did you get transferred here? I might have told the truth about this to Paulina, but Katya here will sell it on the market for three kopekas that would be the same as printing all my thoughts and hanging them near Vova's picture for everyone to see. It's all because of my parents. Dad has a new job here, and my mom... My mom... But Katya didn't even listen to me. She just rushed towards the perked up ears of her friends, whispered something while stealing glances at me and giggling. Yeah, right! He takes us all for fools. I've heard it's all because of his father. He's cro he crossed the road with some big shot and now their family is hiding in a remote little village. That's not true. You're lying. Oh, and uh, did you hear how he hit Babarin out of the blue? What kind of freak must you be to stop bullying your classmates from day one? I'm not against smacking you either. Stop. You know he started it. And if that wasn't enough... There are rumors that he's hanging out with delinquents from Romka, Romka Pjatifan's gang. Be careful with your bags, girls. I wouldn't be surprised if things start disappearing from our wardrobe. Now we all know who to blame. Petrov and his friends. Yeah, that's right. Shut up! Look at him scream, as if something bit him. His pupils, look how wide they are. I hope he won't go insane and resort to violence again. I mean, there must be a reason his mama was feeding those pills, right? How do you know that? I just stood there in confusion, trying to try in vain to understand how she was able to find out about my medicine. And what scared me even more was the possibility of a horrifying truth hiding amongst her chatter. Yeah, that's right. He's as insane as his little sister. Can you imagine that she says a human-sized owl visits her every night? This is a dream, right? But not a single healthy person has seen it. And this simpleton believes her. Can you imagine that? And then I caught a single kind look from the smirking crowd. Is that true, Anton? Are you really... Are you unwell? Paulina, please listen to me. Yeah, right. Don't listen to this liar, Polinchka. Polinchka. Lisa. Polina slouched as if someone had kicked her in the stomach and then burst out in tears and fell to the dirty floor wailing and screaming. So, uh, bitch face has just told Polina that I was cheating on her with Alyssa. No, no, yeah, it's all fake. Why her? Whatever. I couldn't understand her reaction, but I still rushed to Polina's Pilna's side before getting shoved violently by Katya. Get your paws off, holy monster. Yeah, whatever. Rage was building up under the veil of my fear. Good. It slowly rose from the cloudy mist. Good. I felt my upper lip lift creep up, showing my teeth. Good. The fact that your father beats your mother doesn't give you the right to do the same to the girls. Oh, ew. My fists became hammers and I couldn't unclench them. Nobody can speak about my family like that. I came to my senses when I already lunged at the angry Katya. I hate this. Smacker. Ew, you guys are pretty. 
The same moment the crowds around her became louder and started whistling. I started whistling and roaring. And growing. The slender silhouettes of students became larger, wider. They shot upward toward the ceiling. Oh. Turned into giant black forest chock full of toothy faces. Pretty! So you've finally shown your animal nature. Coward. Katya's face was twisted by jubilation and ecstasy. What? Go away! Ugh. What makes her better than me? I don't know. Polina screamed while choking on her tears. He is just an animal. An outsider. Oh. Hi. A scary flapping of wings came from the forest. Two giant white ears descended somewhere from above me, and I dug myself into them. Please. Wake up. Oh, this again. I jumped up, almost falling out of bed. Apparently, I was thrashing around for hours on the sweat-soaked sheets. All your scream pulled me out, set me free from the tentacles of fear. <laughs> it took my eyes a while to focus on the silhouette near the window. Olya's voice was distant. My head was still ringing after the fight. My sister, as distressed as ever, kept on repeating the same phrase. Her tears poured on my heart like boiling water, but I was almost thankful for the owl's appearance. Otherwise, this scared Olya wouldn't have woken me up. Wait a second, Olya. Want me to read Merzilka for you? Give me... I placed my bare heels on the cold floor, felt around for my glasses, remembered Semyon, his mean actions, and sighed. She couldn't tear her eyes off the window as if it was as if it was a steering contest. I found the light switch with my hand. The lamp poured bright light all over me. I got up from bed. My vision fooled me, moving the window closer, only to push it further at the next moment. Oh, I don't like this. I'm gonna open the curtains and it's not even gonna be her. I'm still gonna be dreaming, right? My sister was just a blurry spot. Oh my god, no. I made a careful step forward. What's just what's gonna jump at me now? Olya. What's there? What happened? Oh fuck's sake, get it over with. Do you want me to open the curtains? Come on! <laughs> no, please don't. The, the owl is there. Her voice the voice was coming from behind. Oh hi, Jesus Christ! I turned around and froze from the terror. Teary eyed Olya stood in the doorway. Who? Who are you talking to right now? She stared at me with eyes that were red from crying, with her hands wrapped around her shoulders. Her voice was nervous, as if she was afraid to hear my answer. I was talking to you. To someone who pretended to be you. Oh, it's moving. It's moving. Ew. Oh, hello. The ledge outside my window creaked, creaked ominously, as if something huge was sitting on top of it. Oh. The thing that pretended to be Olya started spreading, changing shape, grow to, growing to scary heights under the light of a carnivorous moon. Hi! No thank you! Not interested! No, I don't wanna! Bye! The voice didn't belong to my sister anymore. The thing that was hiding behind my curtains got tired of pretending, making me look like a fool. I pinched myself as hard as I could, hoping that the silhouette near the window was just a continuation of my nightmare, a hallucination brought on by the cursed house. And those don't bite, do they? I heard Olya's shrill scream when someone had knocked on the window. <laughs> Another knock, I stepped back into the middle of the room. As if there existed hook as if there existed nooks where I could hide from this horror. The sound was sharp, metallic. 
The lamp started shimmering and then suddenly lighted the hole and went out, like a candle under a strong wind. The filament inside it snapped with a ringing sound. <coughs> well, this is fun! The darkness that was waiting for the exact moment poured from all angles and enveloped me. There was only this window left in the whole universe. A moonlight fell through it, painting everything in the color of bones. <coughs> Olya started squealing and pressed herself into my back, seeking protection. Oh, hello. And then an eye burning with carnivorous fire stared at us from the window. Ha! Ha! Can you fuck off, mate? No, it wasn't trying to break the window. It was toying with us. It just kept on knocking, driving us mad. Piss off! As if a giant clock was measuring the time we had left, and its pendulum kept swinging above the abyss. You're making my nose itch! Go away! Shoo! Leave us be! That's gonna help. She was screaming in desperation, her hands clutching my arm like a pair of pincers. No! Is this, uh, Alyssa again? Tell it that I won't be a bad girl. You're fine. It's just a, a little bitch on the windowsill. Tell it to fuck off. It's Alyssa, I swear to God. The moonlight suddenly disappeared and the room descended into darkness. We couldn't see the burning eye anymore. I swallowed up the, sting the stingy lump that was stuck in my throat. Stepped towards the curtains, embraced by the call of its this distinguished, disfigured guest. Olya was standing behind me, mumbling, I'll be good, I'll be good, I'll be good. The bleak window was creeping closer. The curtains rustled. I reached out to move the curtain aside so I could look my fear in the eye. At that moment, I heard noise coming from our parents' bedroom. Without thinking, I pulled the curtains to the side in one swing. Nothing. Though, there was something shining on the ledge among the scattered feathers. Oh, my glasses! The ones the Semyon took from me. How did they get here? Was that a gift from the gurgling knight? Did that owl really bring them here? I looked at the front yard, at the foreboding clearing, to the toothy forest. Not a soul. Not even a hint out of of out late guests. Only the old lamppost, dreaming like a lone watchman among the snowy desert. The dry window frame creaked. I tore away the insulating tape and the stripes of glued newspapers. Stipes. I barely managed to open the window. Frost stung me with its little needles. The paintings on my walls moved from the draft. I touched my glasses, sure that they wouldn't melt they would melt in my hands. But they were real. My brain was scrambling for an explanation. Semyon and his gang had just pulled a prank on me. That was it. And a smooth white blanket was glittering under the street lamp just outside her yard. If anyone was to get close to the house, to climb the pipe to the ledge of my window, they would surely leave footprints. But there were none. I cautiously took my glasses. My wrist was still intact. Nobody pulled me into the darkness full of restless, restless writhing. Why aren't you in bed? I swayed from surprise and almost fell out the window. Are you out of your mind? Did it feel hot in here? Do you want to catch a cold? The owl was here. Tosha chased it away. Go to your room immediately and get in your bed. And you. Mom paused, directing her seething eyes at me. She was thinking of a punishment equivalent to my mistake. In the end, she just waved her hand took Olya by the shoulder and left, leaving me with the last grim words. We'll talk tomorrow. I managed to get the frame back in place with a couple of hits. Pressed the latches with all of my all the strength my fingers could muster. The cold left the room, but the, feel was, the fear was still present. I placed my glasses on my nose and started studying my reflection in the window. It didn't look like a face, more like a death mask boy from the boy from the had it too what that night I was on the edge of joining him there a black and white face was staring at me through the clearing between student heads and it wasn't Vova his face was right beside it I recognized the fat cheeks and the damaged skin well I can't say I'm sad about it <laughs> Babarin's photo was printed out and placed under the glass, like an exhibition piece. Uh-oh. 
Oh no! Whatever will we do? We must find him. Quickly. Maybe Vova in the end was actually a, a dickhead as well then, if, if he's also missing. Maybe it only goes after bad children. But anyway, thank you for completing episode 2. We are deeply grateful for everyone who purchased the game in early access. All the profits will go towards further develop development of the game. Wow! So we actually finished it. I didn't, I didn't think we actually finished it yet. Oh, hmm, cool. I thought there would be more, but that's fine. We can just play it when uh, the full thing comes out. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you for sticking with me through all the reading. I know this is going to be a long, long, long ass video, but I really appreciate any of you that stuck around for it. So thanks so much. Please check out my other videos if you fancy it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.